In this assignment, we're going to get familiar with the PhotoP um, work environment. Uh, we'll create, or rather, manage an image that already exists. Uh, we'll be uh, using some tools, getting familiar with uh, where things are, how the uh, software is laid out, at least a little bit. I'm going to open up the assignment from Lessons and Assignments in uh, eCampus. It should be whatever or whenever you're taking this course should be in the first week of school. And this is a, an assignment called Your First Photo P Image. I have provided some links that will come in handy when we're working. Photo P is its own webpage. You can type in photop.com and visit it, or you can simply click on the link that I have provided. By the way, although I pronounce it as Photo P, um, I'm unsure of the true pronunciation. I have seen it uh, called Photopia or Photopia, uh, but uh, I read in a Reddit uh, article that the uh, creator of the site actually calls it Photop, as if it were a sweet P at the end. So if you have used Photoshop before, or if you're familiar with it, this looks a lot like it. Uh, I hope that it's around for a while, Photo P that is. Uh, Photoshop is not going anywhere. Uh, however, this maybe looks a little bit too much like it. I hope that they don't get into too much legal trouble. Uh, however, although it does work a lot like Photoshop, there's many things that are different about it. It's obviously, like I said, a very online environment. Uh, if you just go and visit the page, it's automatically loaded, which is a great advantage over Photoshop, which can take several minutes to uh, to just to boot up in some instances. So what you're going to be doing here, basically you're going to be following my directions, and uh, by the time you see this video, hopefully there's also some written instructions about what to achieve. Uh, first of all, I need to open up an image. And the way that I do that, since I did click on the link, it opened up another tab. I have this image that I want you to work on. If this were a Photoshop course, I would ask you to download it to uh, work with it. But since you may be working on a Chromebook, rather than going through that, let's copy where this is. And by that I mean, I'm going to right click on the link itself and tell it to copy the link address. So now I have the address uh, copied onto the clipboard. I can go into Photopea. And this works very much like Photoshop in that it's got the uh, file menus up here, file, edit, image, etc. If you click on any of these, you'll get more instances of things to do. Let's go to File and Open from URL. So it's going to expect a website, which is what we just copied. Click on that, Open from URL going to right actually just click and right click uh, here to paste I could have also pressed control V to paste V as in Victor and there's the link this uh, this is an image that I have saved in my uh, in my website so I'll click OK it tells me that it's loading and it loads it up now my screen unfortunately is a little bit larger than what I'm recording so let me see if I can give you the whole picture here so I got from the top all the way to the bottom. Okay, so this is a simple image. I'm going to press Control-0, that zooms out. You can also press Control-minus to zoom out or Control-plus to zoom in. I think that somewhere around the middle it should be okay. So if I press Control-0, I see the whole thing. This image is a letter size image. It's uh, just like what you would uh, print on your printer at home. It's just the letter size. And I can actually get that information if I go into the image folder and tell it to tell me the image size. It tells me that this is 850 pixels by 1100 pixels at 100 dpi. There will be more information in this course later about what a lot of these things mean. I think that pixels are easy to get. They're just little, uh, uh, little uh, measurements that add up to inches, add up to feet, etc. I can actually change it to uh, inches if I click on the pixels down arrow and say, okay, give me the inches. This was 8.5 by 11. This is 8.5 by 11, the size of a regular sheet of paper. 
and the interpolation is bilinear and resample. I'm not even going to mess with that. I click OK. I just wanted that information and now I have it. I told you that I have the menu, uh, the file menus up here and uh, there's other buttons that uh, will become obvious as I start to scroll and uh, tell you about them. Well, they'll become obvious to me. Sorry about that. Uh, and we have this uh, toolbar on the left side that will allow us to do all the work. Once again, this is very similar to Photoshop in many ways, but not completely. So let's see what I can do. What can I show you here? Well, this shape that was opened, it's a pentagon. It's right in the middle or close to the middle of the page. Please notice on the right side that we have a layers area. And the layers area tell me that I have two layers. Now imagine that you have uh, transparencies, uh, transparent plastic that has the image of the Pentagon that's been put on top of a sheet of white paper. And that's what we have here. You can sort of see that around the Pentagon there are some uh, uh, squares and uh, that means that that area is transparent. These eyes next to the layers tell me that these are visible layers. The darkened area in the shape one copy tells me that this is the active layer. If I do anything here, that's where it's going to happen. It's going to happen in this layer. I can turn off the background layer and now I see that checkerboard that I was talking about, the little squares. And that means that this is transparent around it. There's nothing there. It's just a pentagon. I can turn off the pentagon and it's not really gone. Unlike Photoshop though, because this is a shape, I see that I still have something left behind here. And these are blue lines, which in the end don't really print. If I were to actually print this to a printer right now, nothing would come out because these are invisible lines. They just guide our way around the shape. I'm going to turn on both of the layers again. And although these are called shape one copy and background, I noticed this little lock on the side. That means that this layer is, you can change it if you really want to, but I would just leave it alone. It's locked. We might be making some changes later, but not right now. The uh, other layer is not locked, which means I can make some changes to it. For example, shape one copy tells you that I used to have another shape here, and this is actually just a copy of it. So I'm going to double click on the words shape one copy and I'm just going to type in the word Pentagon and press enter. I've changed it. If you have been following along with the video, maybe you saw that there are some changes happening in this window up here. This is our history. Uh, it tells me that I opened the file, I changed the image size, or so I ch checked the image size actually, and then changed the name of the layer. I can go back in time as it were I, uh, if I go to image size, I have no longer changed the name, but if I go back to change name change, then you can see that the name has been changed indeed. This is instead of control Z or undo. I told you earlier that the Pentagon, or at least the shape uh, layer, is the one that's active because it's a darker color. If I wanted to do anything with, with the background, which I don't, but if I wanted to, I could click on it, and then it becomes a darker color, telling me that this is active now. So let's see, what can I tell you about this? I told you earlier about pixels and inches. And uh, an easier way, or at least I don't know about easier, but uh, something that comes in handy is if you can tell what space you're working in. Let's click on the view menu and open up the rulers. And now I have pixels, all kinds of pixels. Like I said, they're tiny measurements. So the 850 pixels show up here to about 1100 pixels. If you'd rather see this in inches, which at this moment I think I might, I will right click on the ruler itself and select inches. Now I have eight and a half inches and 11, or actually it's a 10 and a half going down. It should be 11 and a half at any rate. Actually it's 11. I can now see the rulers and where I am. And, and later on in the course, we'll have additional use for these rulers as well. Uh, notice once again the uh, the uh, default tool that came up along the uh, toolbar on the side was this tool at the very top. It's called the move tool. 
It's the same in Photoshop. It's very, very important. There's also a selection area. This is unlike Photoshop. Well, it's very similar. It's uh, we'll do rectangle selects and lip selects. Basically, you can draw squares and rectangles and circles to make selections. We have lassos. We have uh, object selections. We have a crop tool. We have uh, eyedroppers. We have lots of stuff. And hopefully, by the end of this course, you'll be familiar with some of these tools and be able to use them to create a project. So let's do something real simple here with the move tool click on that is selected every time that I select a tool if, if you saw as I was clicking let's say I go to rectangle maybe you'll notice that the dashboard on here up here has changed every tool has different options including the move tool that we'll be able to use so don't think of each one of these as a, just one tool that you can use there's multiple uses that are built into the software uh, notice here on our tab, because we can have multiple documents open, we have only one open, it's RC140201, and the extension that it has is a PSD, that's short for Photoshop document. Although this is a Photopea software, this is actually a Photoshop document, it was created in Photoshop at another time somewhere else. So. Uh, what can I tell you about the top here, we will be using transform tools in a little bit. I don't know about distances, uh, but we will be using brushes, etc. Move. Uh, we will be uh, doing lots of stuff with all of these tools. Well, now that Pentagon is clicked and, and it's darkened, this is then the um, active layer. I can use the Move tool to move the, the Pentagon. If I click on it and drag it, I'm holding down the left shift button, or rather the left mouse button, and I can move it around including all the way outside the page. Although it's outside the page, I can't see the Pentagon per se, but I can always move it back. Later on, I'll show you how to uh, find missing objects if you move them away too far or you forget where you put them. I'll put it somewhere around the middle and notice how these red lines are appearing as we move the object around the area. It's telling me that there now it's sort of in the center and I'll leave it there for now. Okay, so now that I've moved that, I have told you how to turn off the layers off and on. How about let's create a new layer. I'm going to right click on the Pentagon layer and select Duplicate Layer. This makes a copy, it's called Pentagon Copy, and it's a blue Pentagon just like the one I had before. But what if I wanted to have a red Pentagon? Do I need to find a special tool somewhere to just sort of fill it in? Well, we could do that, but if you notice here at the bottom of this thumbnail, that tells me that this is a shape. So rather than painting on top of, which I could, but it's a lot easier if I just deal with the shape as what it is. It's a shape. So let's find the shape tool it's somewhere in here. It's a little bit different than uh, uh, Photoshop is. Let me see. Is this is a rectangle and the shape is going to be found somewhere around where there's other shapes already that I had selected. So let's see, there's this rectangle up here. Maybe yours is at the bottom. Uh, since my uh, image has been scrunched a little bit here, maybe I'm missing some stuff. I'm clicking and holding the rectangle and I see that I can draw a rectangle, an ellipse, a line, uh, or a parametric shape. That's what this is actually. It's a parametric shape it's got all kinds of uh, sides around it and I'm in that layer right now if I click on the move tool I can click it to actually be in the area where it's selected I can then say okay well I'm working with a shape right so I click on the shape and it tells me that the fill of the shape is this blue and that it's got no stroke that is it doesn't have a line going around it that I can see uh, it tells me how big the stroke would be, or the line, how thick it would be, and what kind of shape it is. I'm going to click on the fill icon here, it says it's blue. Let's change it to something else. I get a palette that appears, and there's some swatches of color here. If I click on red, then the image, the shape that is drawn, will change to red. I will accept it, basically by clicking again on the Move tool and see how now on my layers to the right I have this pentagon copy which is red 
and you can't see the pentagon below it. If I wanted to see it, I would have to turn off, or poke the eye of the blue pentagon, and then turn it back on by clicking on the eye so that I can see it. Okay, so hopefully you can tell that whatever is on top is what's actually on front of the image. So uh, if I wanted to see the blue pentagon, I would have to click on it and either yes, uh, turn it off, turn off the red one by clicking on the eye or clicking the pentagon, holding down the mouse button and dragging it up so that it's on top of the red. Now that's what's on top. So that means that it's actually what's in front of the image. I can also make the uh, blue pentagon be not so opaque. I'm going to click on the opacity arrow here and move down the opacity to something less. And what's actually happening is as, as it's turning it off, the blue is mixing with the red below. So it's turning purple. If I go all the way down to opacity zero, then the pentagon, although I can see it in the thumbnail, it's actually invisible. I'm going to turn it all the way back on so that I can see everything here. As I told you earlier, since I can click on this image, I have this fill color and I'm going to select another one. Well, rather than selecting another one, I could actually make another copy. And since I made a pentagon copy before, I expect to see a second copy if I right click and tell it duplicate layer and it now tells me Pentagon copy number two. So Pentagon copy, I want to double click on that and I want to change this from Pentagon copy to Pentagon red. Press enter to accept. Double click on this Pentagon, the one that's blue and add the word blue after it. And then do the same thing on this, up one, on this other one at the very top and change that copy to to green. It's not green yet, but since I'm in this layer and it's active, I can go to the fill and select a green. I don't see a green, so why don't I see if I can click on this color, which is already blue rather, and where did I miss a step? Let me backtrack just a second. Actually, I can click on this red icon here, which is the color picker, and select the green and click OK. Now my fill will have a green that's available because the swatch was added. Every time that you use a color, a swatch is added. So I can click on the green, and now my green pentagon is green, my blue pentagon is blue, my red pentagon is red. Okay, so moving on to the next thing, I'm going to start to play with some of these tools. I've been talking about all these layers. There's a background that was already there. It's a just blank sheet of paper. Then the pentagons we've been working with. If I wanted to add in something additional here, I need to work with a new layer. And I can create a new layer by either clicking the new layer icon below. Uh, the words new layer appear. You can't see them because they're being cut off at the bottom of the screen. I could also go to the layer menu on top and say layer new and new layer. So now I have a layer called layer one and I'll just leave it as such layer one is fine. I'm going to find another tool that's called the brush tool. I can see brushes uh, here. A lot of our tools will work like brushes, but especially the brush works like a brush. If I click on this, my dashboard changes, tells me that the opacity of the brush is about 100, the flow is at 100. These will be explained later in the course. The blend mode is normal and I'll leave it as such. The color, my active color is still green, but I want to work with a different color. Why don't I click on the green and maybe pick yellow. I'll click OK. And look at how tiny that brush is. It's just a little, little dot. Notice the dashboard now has this additional tool. This mine says 15. 15 is actually how many pixels wide the brush is. I can change the size by going a little bit, a little bit higher here. Notice how this now is bigger. I, I could have selected another pixel or rather another brush from below, but I just changed the one that I have. And notice that it's at 100% hardness. I'm going to click and drag with this yellow brush and I'm going to zoom in I press control plus to zoom in notice how the edges are kind of very solid 
very much like the Pentagon is. So let's draw that and paint it yellow. And so that's fine. Now have this paint and it just looks like I took, uh, I don't know what, a piece of chalk or a marker or something. What if I wanted to make it look as if it were spray painted, you know, not so rough around the edges. I could click on the same tool that I just clicked on before to change the size and change the hardness from 100 down to say 50 something and it wouldn't be so rough so if I do this I start to paint it's still the same yellow but the edges are not so not so rough I want to click on this again and take the, sh the hardness all the way down to zero and now this looks sort of like it was spray painted a little bit maybe I could still make this smaller or larger depending on what I'm doing. I'll press Control zero to fit the whole thing in there and then press Control plus to get it a little closer. Okay so next I want to maybe put in some text and what's cool about the text is that when I do this when I create use the text tool which is just the letter T down here it's a type tool is what they call it and when I do that I get my dashboard on top. It's already selected a uh, a uh, font, Stasia Sans. All of these are free fonts. They're all open source, so they're not commercial grade. If I click and hold, hopefully it'll okay. And now it'll let me look at this a little bit better. I'm just gonna scroll down and pick something that's different. I don't know why don't I? I want to also get something that's easy to read. That angry looks like it might be cool, but this Erica One actually looks kind of fun. So I'll click on that to select. It tells me Erica One is the font I'm using. And by the way, this this color, this black color up here, is what color the text will be, not this yellow color. So if I wanted to type in blue, I would have to click on this and then select the blue icon, the blue swatch that is, or actually just mix the color up here on the left. Notice how I can go from red to red. This is more red, this is more orange at the bottom to select, okay, what gamut of the color do I want? And I want it to have it blue, I think. So I'll just launch around here the blue and then just select the blue from there. Or like I said, just click, pick on the, uh, the blue swatch and click OK. Now, I think that I'm ready to type or not. Maybe not. Let's, uh, wanna, double check by clicking on the T and then clicking in the image and I'm going to type okay now it's slowed at the font Erica I'm going to type in hello H-E-L-L-O it's kind of hard to read from here so I'll double click on that you could also press control A to select it to select all or you can double click on the T and then that way all of the word is selected well, it's blue and it says hello, and I can see that it says hello because now that's the name of the layer. I can come to the size of the font and make it larger. Let's see how large can it go? 150 pixels, that's pretty big. I'll click on the move tool so that I can move it somewhere else. I'll move it above the uh, blue uh, Pentagon and, uh, and see, okay, well, does that mean that I can't go bigger than that, that 150? Let's double click on the T again and hello in the hello layer. And although it says 150 and it only goes up that high, I can always double click it and press or rather type in 200. And then it'll make it that large. I'll click on the move tool to get this somewhere else. That little line appears because I'm right in the middle and I'm in the middle below here. I'll put it up on top over here. And I'm going to click on Transform Controls. This is equivalent to a tool that exists in Photoshop that will give me these anchors. What this means is that I can stretch this. Be careful when you stretch because all kinds of weird things can happen. And that's what's happening here. I don't want to have tall, skinny letters. I want them to look sort of like it did before. So I'm pressing and holding the Shift key. And then that way it's got the same dimensions as it did before. Now my text... I can't tell anymore how large it is. It's 234 pixels actually. When I selected it, it tells me that that's what's happening. Okay, so I have blue text on top here. Let me show you something else really quick too. I'm going to find this effects button, the layer style below. 
I don't know if you can see it, but EFF has basically effects. FX is what Photoshop says. This is EFF, and there's a layer style uh, announcement there. But I can't have you see it because my screen is not large enough at the moment. But I can't select on effects. And I can say, hey, this blue wouldn't be great if it actually was glowing or something. We'll talk about these when we get to this uh, part of Photopea. But let's, if, right now, just to get started, get an outer glow. And here it is, outer glow, and it gives me a menu. Well, how do I want to glow this? Well, just so I have some contrast, why don't I make it glow in purple or something like that? How do I pick the glow color? Well, here's this little box here that's yellow currently. I'll try to find a purple glow. I'll select it from the color picker. I'll click OK to accept it, so now it's purple. Nothing's happening because it's a screen blend mode, and screen basically just says make this color lighter. I want to make it darker, so I'm going to click where it says screen and select multiply. Now you can see a little bit of color around there. I can tell it to go larger by telling the spread to grow. Same thing with size. So now I have a larger size and a larger spread. And you can see that purple is beginning to play with the rest of the colors. The opacity is at 75%. I can make this like really stand out at 100% or make it be a little bit more mellow if I scroll down somewhere around the, the middle. I'll go with 40 something here. 44 is fine. And I'll click OK to accept it. So now I have the hello with the glow. I'm going to click on the move tool and move this. See how the glow changes as you move the uh, text around and it doesn't work only on text it we could have applied a uh, a glow to the pentagon and i do believe if this anything if this is more like photoshop i'm going to right click on eff and well, it's, it's probably not going to let me I'll, I'll study how i can copy this and then uh, we can actually do it okay well what else can i tell you here probably not a lot more because i've been talking for almost half an hour uh, so let's do something that I would like you to do, please. And this is, although this is a good size, this is a, I'm going to turn off the transport controls that I turned on before. So that way I don't have the, um, those anchors there. And I'm going to press control zero to see the whole thing. Notice how I told you earlier, this is a letter size page. So it's a, it's a tall rectangle. I want you to convert this into a square. And the fastest way to do this is to go into the image menu and select not image size because although this will allow you to move the image, it will allow you to stretch it or to shrink it, I just want the canvas that is the area that I'm using to change. So I'm going to change the canvas size. It tells me that it's currently 850 pixels by 1100 pixels if I change the pixels to inches tells me something that I already knew, which is 8.5 by 11. 8.5 across and 11 down. So notice how the anchor, that is this whole thing, whatever is in the middle, things around it will change. So let me change the height from 11. I double click there and I want to backspace to delete it. I'm going to type in 8.5 and then that way the canvas size is 8.5 by 8.5. So it's a square. I'll click OK and now see how everything has shrunk into a square well the truth is is that layer one where i spray painted that yellow uh is still everything is still there nothing got cropped out i can go and use the move tool and just say move this thing out of the way or move it somewhere else i can also uh do the same with the hello oh that's neat uh right click if you right click on something in your screen it'll tell you what layer it's in this is the hello so now hello is active and I can move this to the center like that and why don't I move these pentagons around a little bit I'm going to move the blue pentagon and I'm going to move the right pentagon the red pentagon anyway so that you can see it elsewhere somewhere over here notice how hello is on top of everything so it kind of blends in with the blue so maybe the blue pentagon I can move it somewhere else where it's not so messy and hello I can move below here where it doesn't interfere with the blue it's up to you this is your image you don't have to use my colors use any colors that you like 
uh, play with the tools, play with the areas, explore the things that we've done here, and save your file. This is very important, and I know that if you're using a Chromebook, it's not the same as it is in a regular computer. But if you have a regular computer, you can simply go to File and Save as PSD. Be sure to save as a PSD. Don't export as a JPEG. We'll do that later. For now, we need that Photoshop document so that all of these cool layers on the side don't get lost. That's a lot of work. It's half an hour of talking. I don't want to lose that. So I'm going to click on Save as PSD. And because I'm in a Chromebook environment, well, first of all, I have pop-up block. We're going to white list this list so that I don't get this problem again file and save as PSD and now I have the uh, Google Drive come up and somewhere in my files I'm going to click here oh actually I'm going to go to my Google Drive it's easier to find and here I have stuff for my other classes so I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it ARTC-1402 that's the rubric for this class I'll double click on it and this file is already called artsy140201.psd so I'm going to leave it as such if you want to change it to something else you know just make sure that you know where you have it and what it's called I want to click on save and now it tells me that it's downloaded it into the uh, Google Drive in order for me or actually for you to turn this in make sure that you go to the assignment 01.3 your first photo P image there is not a video here because it's being recorded as I speak. I'm going to click on that assignment and then tells you that there's 10 possible points, etc. And here it tells me, okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to submit my assignment. I'm going to click on Browse My Computer. It's actually going to browse my drive. And remember, I saved it on the Google Drive on an RC1402, and this is actually called RC140201. I'll click Open on that. And now it's telling me that it's going to upload artsy140201.psd as an attachment. I cannot click on submit without getting an error, but you can click submit and turn in your assignment. This is the first assignment for Photoshop using Photopea. Well, that didn't sound right. This is the first digital imaging assignment using Photopea or Photopea or Photopia or whatever you want to call it. And let's just call it a Photoshop alternative that sounds like Photopea. And we'll see you in the next video.